that sort of statement, like, hey, if, if you're active and have decent body comp, like this nutrition principle for health doesn't really apply to you. Sometimes that is true. Um, so, for example, we've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, some people are concerned about high sugar intake or high fructose intake uh, in particular. And, I mean, as far as that goes, like to simplify a relatively large body of literature, um, there might be something to that. Like if you're relatively sedentary and consuming a lot of sugar, there might be some some negative downstream effects of that. But if you are quite active, have relatively high sugar intake, especially if you're also in a calorie deficit, it seems like it just doesn't matter. So there are, there are situ certain situations where a nutrition recommendation with, with health in mind does apply to one population and doesn't apply to another population. Um, I also think that one of the things motivating this, this type of thought is sometimes just to kind of like get oneself off the hook for a way that you have to eat in pursuit of some other goal. So for example, um, you know, if someone is a CrossFit athlete or an endurance athlete, or even just like a super heavyweight powerlifter or strongman, and in order to fuel your performance and, and just maintain weight, um, if you're trying to get down five, 6,000 calories per day, that's going to be pretty hard to do if you're trying to eat like quote unquote clean. And so Dude, imagine trying to do that on a low sugar, low sodium diet. Insane. Yeah. I can't, I can't even conceive of that. No. Um, and I don't think most people can conceive of that. And so, you know, I, I think that uh, people who primarily have performance goals might want to tell themselves like, look, I got to do what I got to do to get down this many calories. Uh, performance is very important to me. This is how I have to eat to fuel my performance. Uh, and so I'm just going to assume that this is all fine. Uh, like I, I think that there, <laughs> I think that there's some amount of that, uh, in play. Um, I also think it is true to some extent that some of the specific benefits that one might get from eating like quote unquote healthy foods are also benefits that one would get from exercise. So for example, uh, there are plenty of benefits from eating antioxidant-rich fruits, uh, and and we kind of joked about uh, uh, Paul Saladino being afraid of vegetables and and defense chemicals in vegetables uh, last episode. So like it is true that there are chemicals in vegetables that are like trying to kill things that are eating them. We are big enough that those chemicals don't kill us, but they do cause some amount of oxidative stress. And one of the reasons vegetables are good for you is that your body responds to that stressor of the vegetable by increasing endogenous antioxidant levels, endogenous antioxidant activity. So that that that's one of the, I think that's a very cool thing about vegetables. That's one of the reasons they're good for you, uh, in, in addition to like fiber intake and phytonutrients and other stuff. Um, but yeah, so, you know, those are, those are discrete benefits of two categories of food that are typically thought to be very good for you. Those are also benefits you get from exercise. So when you exercise, that causes oxidative stress. And as a result, your body's endogenous antioxidant system produces more antioxidants. The activity of those antioxidants increases. So there, there's, you know, I, I do think that it's still probably an additive benefit, like exercising and eating vegetables, probably better than exercising and not eating vegetables. But if you exercise and eat vegetables, there there are a lot of similar things going on on a cellular level that you would see in someone who doesn't eat exercise and does eat vegetables. Like it, you're you're causing similar physiological effects. Maybe making vegetable intake slightly less important, still important, still good for you, but you you are already getting some of those same adaptations just from doing exercise. So I, I think that's a dynamic uh, as well. And, and there's also a, kind of a similar situation where sometimes exercise is directly attenuating some of the potentially deleterious impacts of a food so like also true yeah one of the things that came up was like sodium and and i think about like an endurance runner who is running like crazy uh which you know be having high cardio respiratory fitness generally tends to to drive blood pressure downward 
and they're just sweating out a ton of sodium during their you know runs in the summer and things like that so you can see where for that individual there are directly protective mechanisms in place that counteract the the kind of primary thing you'd be concerned about which would be the sodium incre increasing blood pressure yeah yeah, yeah. so there there is to, to some extent the the things that people are the the th the sorts of statements that this uh, uh question comment was responding to sometimes it's just true so in the case of sugar intake sometimes uh you know it would still be good to eat healthy things but you you get yourself off the hook a little bit because you're you are causing similar physiological adaptations from doing exercise uh however there is a very large kernel of truth to what uh what you expect was asking here on reddit um and, and i think that a lot of times when people either say uh you know hey you don't have to worry about this nutrition advice for health because you're exercising or they tell themselves that like yeah you know what i'm i'm healthy i'm exercising i don't need to worry about this stuff all that much i think that i think that implicitly what people are often doing is comparing risk levels between populations and, and they kind of have implicitly a population in mind where they say okay this population is at an elevated risk and I consider this level of elevated risk to be too much. So as long as what I'm doing keeps me below that level of risk, I am therefore good. So for example, uh, the comment mentioned saturated fat intake. And so, you know, if you're pretty active and you consume a decent amount of saturated fat, your risk of cardiovascular disease uh, is probably lower than someone who is sedentary and consumes the same amount of saturated fat. And it may be comparable to someone who's sedentary and consumes very little saturated fat. And so you look at that and you say, well, okay, I'm comfortable with the level of risk of being sedentary and consuming low saturated fat. I am active. Therefore, I can consume a fair bit of saturated fat and not be at elevated risk relative to the level of risk I am comfortable with. So you might be able to lower your risk even more if you are quite active and consumed very low saturated fat, but just kind of what what you're implicitly pegging your brain to uh, in terms of what you perceive to be risk you're comfortable with versus uncomfortable with, you know, the, the way you're eating given your activity levels still keeps you below that level of risk that you're comfortable with even though you could probably reduce your risk further uh, if you wanted to. 